A healthy stream is a complex place. Vegetation grows along its banks, shading the stream and filtering pollutants before they enter the water. Wildlife find shelter and food near and in its waters. And within the stream itself are fish, insects and other organisms with specific needs for oxygen, food and shelter. Certain land uses affect habitat quality and stream health. The stream corridor functions holistically, so any changes to a part may affect the entire habitat. Now here's Christopher Wright, aquatic biologist at the University of Wisconsin-Platteville, to tell you more about the habitat assessment. Unlike other components used to monitor your stream, which were measured at specific locations within your site, habitat assessment is more of a summary of different characteristics throughout your entire 300-foot site. To assess habitat, you will answer a series of 10 questions, ranking different characteristics on a scale of 1 to 4. Because you will be ranking or judging different characteristics, we also suggest that you visit other sites and streams throughout Wisconsin to get a better feel for the variance that may occur among these different characteristics. To measure habitat assessment, you will need the following pieces of equipment. Waders or hip boots, marking flags, a tape measure, data sheets, and a pencil. There are two different habitat recording forms, one for soft bottom streams and one for rocky bottom streams. Use the rocky bottom form if your stream generally has a rocky bottom. Usually, these streams have an abundance of riffle habitat or fast water areas. Use the soft bottom form if your stream generally has a mucky or sandy bottom. Usually these streams are in low gradient areas and have few to no riffle habitat or fast water areas. The two habitat assessment forms for rocky and soft bottom streams are nearly the same except for three to four parameters. I will first work through each of the 10 questions on the chart for rocky bottom streams and then finish with the three to four questions that differ on the soft bottom. For each question, you will assign a score of one to four to the stream habitat characteristic being assessed. Circle the appropriate value as you work through the data sheet, then tally the scores once you have answered all the questions. For several of the questions, you'll be asked to assess habitat on the right and left sides of the stream. For waves habitat assessment, the right side of the river is on the side that is on your right when you are facing upstream, basically because that's how fish orient themselves in the stream. The first habitat parameter to consider is riparian vegetation. Riparian vegetation is the vegetation that exists along either side of the stream. For this component, we're considering the amount of natural vegetation that exists from the stream bank out 50 feet from the side of the stream. In this situation, on our left side of the stream, we notice that we have mowed areas and a trail. The riparian vegetation is less than 25 feet wide. Therefore, we would give the left bank a score of one in our data sheet. In contrast, on the far side, we have an abundance of natural vegetation with very little evidence of human activity. Our riparian vegetation extends at least 50 feet, therefore we would give the right bank a score of four in our data sheet. Now that we've done riparian vegetation, let's put our waders on and move into the stream. The second habitat parameter we're going to consider is bank vegetation. Much like the riparian vegetation, bank vegetation considers the amount of natural vegetation that exists on our stream banks. For a definition of bank, please refer to your fact sheet. In this situation, on our left bank, we see that vegetation covers over 90% of our stream bank. Therefore, we would score this bank a four. We will notice a very similar situation on the right bank and also give that a four. 
Our third habitat parameter is bank stability. Bank stability assesses areas of erosion and steepness of banks. Slumping banks are also assessed. Note that the artificial embankments are considered in the following question and not here. Banks with no erosion will get the highest score, whereas those that have many eroded areas and areas of collapse will get low scores. Channel alteration is our fourth habitat parameter. Channel alteration refers to human modifications of the stream channel within your 300 foot site. Such modifications include reinforced banks, straightened channels, and concrete embankments. The highest score goes to those sites with little or no modifications and natural meandering of the stream channel. The lowest score will go to those sites with a high degree of modifications, such as this reinforced bank. Our fifth habitat parameter, channel flow status, assesses the water level within the stream. We basically want to consider whether water exists from shoreline to shoreline and how much substrate is exposed within the center of the channel. Sites receiving a high score will have water reaching from shoreline to shoreline and very little substrate exposed mid-channel. Now that we're done with channel flow status, let's move on to stream velocity and depth. Stream velocity and depth is assessed using four relative categories of velocity and depth. The four categories are fast shallow water, fast deep water, slow shallow water, and slow deep water such as I'm standing in right here. We define shallow areas as those less than 18 inches. The highest score will go to sites that have all four combinations of velocity depth. The lowest score will go to those with only one or two representatives of the velocity depth categories. Our seventh habitat parameter is in-stream fish habitat. In-stream fish habitat are structures such as submerged logs, large rocks, undercut banks, and other stable habitat features. These features provide cover for fish. Therefore, sites with the highest score will have an abundance of these types of habitat features, whereas sites such as the one behind me have very few fish habitat structures. Now that we've done in-stream fish habitat, let's move on to sediment deposition. Streams deposit sediments naturally in their slow-moving areas. Sediments include things like fines, sands, and gravels. An abundance of these types of substrates within a channel may suggest that the stream bottom fluctuates frequently. This limits habitat for organisms such as macroinvertebrates. Therefore, sites with very little deposition of these types of sediments will receive a high score on your data sheet, such as the site behind me. In contrast, sites receiving low scores will have an abundance of these types of sediments as evident from features such as point bars. The ninth habitat parameter, embeddedness, refers to the amount of sands or sediments that bury rocks in the bottom of your stream. This parameter should always be measured within the riffle area of your site. To assess embeddedness, reach in and grab a few rocks and see how easily they move. If you cannot reach in, go ahead and use your feet to assess embeddedness. The easier rocks move, the higher the score. The final habitat parameter is attachment sites for macroinvertebrates. This should also be done within the riffle areas of your site. The first thing we consider in this parameter is the size of the riffles within your study site. Size is determined first by considering whether or not the riffle expands the full width of the stream channel 
and then assessing whether the length of that riffle is at least two times the size of the width of your stream channel. The substrate consideration differentiates between cobbles and large rocks or boulders. High scores will come from sites that have large riffles and a predominance of cobbles within those riffles. On the contrary, sites with low scores will have few to no riffles and only large substrates will be present. Now that we've done all the habitat parameters for a rocky bottom stream, I'd like to introduce you to the three parameters that differ for soft bottom streams. Remember that when you're classifying whether your stream is rocky bottomed or soft bottom, you want to make sure that you're classifying it for the whole stream, not just your 300 meter site. Different parts of a given stream may actually represent either a soft bottom or a rocky bottom. So you want to make sure that you're using the habitat parameters for the entire stream, not just your 300 meter site. Soft bottom streams generally have bottoms that are composed of sands and silts, things that move around very easily. They're also in very low gradient areas. The first parameter that differs with respect to the soft bottom streams is something we call sinuosity. Sinuosity has to do with the amount of meandering or bends that occur within that system. With respect to this habitat parameter, what we're looking for is how much the meandering increases the length of the stream running through your 300 meters. Sites that increase the stream length three to four times based on the meandering that goes along your site will receive the highest score. Whereas sites that are straightened with very few meanders, such as the one behind me, will receive the lowest score on your data sheet. The next habitat parameter for soft bottom streams is pool variability. Pools are generally those areas that are slower moving water and generally deeper than say the riffle habitat that is fast and shallow. What we're looking for with pool variability is the amount of different types of pools within your 300 meter site. And we do this based on a size depth classification where we're looking for pools that are either small and shallow, small and deep, large and shallow, or large and deep. Now if your site happens to have a combination of all four of those different pool types, you'll give your site the highest score on your habitat component. Whereas if your site has very few pools, such as the one behind me, you would give it the lowest score on your data sheet. The third habitat parameter for soft bottom streams has to do with pool substrate that is the materials that make up the bottom of your site. If your site is dominated by a mixture of gravel and sand and provides some good cover for fish, you'll give your site a high score on your habitat sheet. In contrast, if your site is dominated by bedrock or hard pan clay and has very little cover for fish, you'll give your site a low score on your habitat sheet. This concludes the habitat assessment portion of the monitoring video. To summarize habitat assessment, you'll need to choose between a rocky bottom and a soft bottom data sheet. You'll have to measure your site, assess the parameters, and then determine your habitat score. Organisms have specific requirements for food, oxygen, and shelter and different organisms are able to survive under different conditions. The habitat assessment can help identify physical conditions in a stream and their availability for aquatic organisms. It helps to provide a well-rounded picture of a stream's health. Habitat assessments are only comparable between sites within small watersheds due to environmental factors, but you can compare scores at a site from one year to the next. If you would like to know more about habitat for aquatic organisms, view the stream ecology section of this DVD series.